Welcome back. In May, many child welfare organizations highlight Foster Care Awareness Month. The JCCA, formerly known as the Jewish Child Care Association, aims to place infants and children in foster homes while their families work to overcome hardship and challenges. With over 200 years of service in New York, the current CEO and executive director, Ron Richter, joins me to discuss the organization's efforts to enhance support for children and families in need. Ron, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Now, uh, as I mentioned in JCCA, uh, it's just basically been over 200 years of service. You know, how has the organization evolved over time? So I think one thing that JCCA feels strongly about is ensuring that we are always trying to be innovative about how we provide social services. And so I'd say the biggest part of that evolution is working hard to keep children out of foster care, to provide preventive behavioral health services in communities, and also to provide families that come to the attention of child welfare authorities with strong preventive services so that children don't have to come into care. That's really how we're trying to innovate. Now, uh, there's a very interesting history behind the JCC JCCA. Um, it, as I mentioned, was an orphanage for Jewish children. Um, and obviously today it has changed a little bit. So can you tell us a little bit more about the state of child welfare at the time when it first began? Of course. So at the time the JCCA began in the 1800s, there were many Jewish immigrants coming to the United States and many settled in New York. However, they did not have the resources to support their children. Many women were identified by law enforcement as unable to care for their babies, and those children would be removed by the police and then often put in hospitals. And in the 1800s, the city reached out to philanthropists, in our case, Jewish philanthropists that had come in the 1600s, from Germany and Holland and asked them to put money together in order to care for these Jewish children. And, and right on through the 1960s and early 70s, JCCA only cared for Jewish children, much like other charitable organizations. Uh, the law changed and now we take care of all children. Now, in what ways does the organization ensure that children and young people in foster care receive quality care? It's one of the biggest challenges we confront and uh, bringing us right up to recent times, uh, we saw the pandemic really impact our ability to continue to hire strong professionals and we are committed to quality service. I would say that the reason we can provide the type of care we do is because of an amazingly strong and committed staff. And I would say that one of the biggest challenges confronting organizations like ours today is just the incredible competition for strong social workers, strong nurses, well-trained people. And therefore, it's so important that we have excellent supervisors available. Um, but I would say workforce is our biggest challenge today. Now, Foster Care Awareness Month just passed in May. In addition to placing a child in care, what other services and support make up the foster care system we see today? Right, so we do an enormous amount to provide strong medical and mental health care, not just to the child who's coming into care, but also to their parents. Because, of course, the goal of foster care is for children to return home once the level of risk to them has been reduced. And so we try very hard to provide concrete need uh, services to families that are struggling with a child in foster care. Do they need help having their rent paid? Do they need help accessing food and other sorts of resources to support their household and ensure that their children can be safe there? And of course, we provide um, substance abuse treatment for those parents that need it and a range of other services to really build the family uh, dynamic and to support family functioning. So we do a whole range of services, um, but the goal here is to ensure that parents have what they need, including capacity to safely care for their children. And then can you just expand or talk about the importance of addressing the mental and emotional health of children and young people and foster care as well as their families? Yeah, I would say that the need for strong mental health services 
uh, is greater than ever. We have seen the occurrence of anxiety and depression among young people, particularly teenagers, resulting from the pandemic. So that period of social isolation, the lack of going to school, the lack of seeing friends, playing organized sports and other activities really impacted a young person's outlook. And so what we have seen is the need for higher end behavioral health services. And of course, any child that is separated from their family and comes into care already has experienced a trauma. And so we really do need to focus our attention now more than ever on addressing those behavioral health needs wherever the child is, at school, at home, however we can. Now, as the landscape of the child welfare and foster care system in New York City changes, how is it currently impacting outcomes for young people and their families? So we think that we're moving in the right direction by caring for uh, children and their families while children are at home. So really trying to prevent removals whenever that can be safe. And of course, that means being really attendant to the family and listening to them and hearing what their experience is and how we can meet them where they are. And our goal at JCCA is to really try to figure out what a parent thinks they need to help make suggestions, to help coach. But at the end of the day, children and parents love each other. It is rare that you see a case where there isn't a deep commitment on both sides. The question is, how can we strengthen the capacity of the parent? And we're always trying to do that um, with resources and with well-trained social workers who, who are um, compassionate and who listen. Now, as a former commissioner of the NYC Administration for Children's Services, you had a bird's eye view of the system at large. Where do you see the most progress and alternatively, where do you still see room for improvement? So I would say there is room for improvement in how we assess safety. And that will always be a challenge in child welfare. Nobody wants to remove a child unnecessarily. The question for child welfare continues to be, who's making that assessment? Are we leveraging the best innovative social science to support those assessments? And are we listening to kids? Because while it is critical that parents be heard, young people really do need to be well interviewed and we need to think about the trustworthiness of any statement that's being made to us. And I would say that most kids don't make stuff up about being mistreated. Um, I think the best thing about our child welfare system in New York City is that we are a national leader in providing strong and science-based preventive services so that we know that the intervention that we're using, whether it's functional family therapy or multi-systemic therapy or child and parent psychotherapy, these are interventions that have been demonstrated to really work so that you're not in a family's life forever and ever. You're doing something to support them with the appropriate dose, that's what it's called, and then hoping to see a family um, sustain the improvements in safety and functioning and living without the child welfare system. Now, with that being said, JCC offers a continuum of care for young people, not only those in your foster care programs, but overall. Can you share with our listeners what that entails? Yeah, so we provide uh, a range of services from uh, community-based preventive behavioral health for perhaps a family that's in a DV shelter and is just struggling with ensuring that their child is okay and functioning well. Um, to preventive services, as I indicated. JCCA is proud to have the first Youth Act team in New York City, which is a family-based program where young people that have very significant behavioral health needs and diagnoses are supported by a team, including mental health professionals, medical professionals, to really shore up their family so that they can be in the community safely. And then, as I described, we do preventive services. We do two kinds of foster care for children that need to come in to care for safety. And then we provide residential services for children who have very high acuity and also struggle with developmental disabilities. So we go all the way from the light touch behavioral health service to the deepest end service for children that are really struggling, um, as are their families. 
Now, as mentioned, May was Foster Care Awareness Month, but now that June has arrived, it's Pride Month, and I think it's so important to discuss this. You know, you know, what is the importance of having foster parents who identify as members of the LGBTQIA community, and how can that be helpful for young people in the system? So, um, obviously, Pride is very important in the foster care system. There are a disproportionate number of young people that identify as LGBTQIA in care across the country. Many of those young people are drawn to New York City because it's considered a place that is accepting. The fact of the matter is that whether a foster parent identifies as LGBTQIA or not, we need foster parents that are going to affirm children's core, who they are. And as everyone knows, adolescents are figuring out who they are. So they should come into care and be in homes where people are accepting and will give them space to figure out who they are. Kids in care are just like kids everywhere. They're each different. They have different ideas, different thoughts, different interests. It is up to us to have foster parents who are going to encourage that development and who are also going to work with parents. We need foster parents who understand that they are there to foster the relationship between that child and that parent so that that family can be reunited. Um, and I think that it is an area where we are making improvements, but certainly if anybody out there is interested in fostering, they should either dial 311 or call us. Our website is jccany.org and get information about how they can support young people. And, you know, I'm so glad that you mentioned uh, just the reality uh, that there are a lot of LGBTQIA children and young people um, because, you know, just throughout research, it shows that a lot of people, of children in that community tend to be more homeless or deal with, you know, a lot of familial issues. So thank you so much for kind of highlighting that, um, especially now that we're in June. So I definitely wanted to highlight that. How can, you know, viewers take action to better support young people in foster care system. Um, and with that, I'll expand. How can like, you know, teachers or, you know, people in these children's lives, you know, better support them? Yeah, so I really think it's important for us to understand that in 2024 in New York City, it is very difficult to get into foster care. That families have really experienced significant trauma before a child is removed. We really do everything we can to prevent that removal. In 1990, there were 50,000 children or so in foster care from New York City. Today, there are fewer than 7,000. So we've really made uh, strong and, and important advances. However, it is important for everyone to understand that kids in care come in traumatized and then are re-traumatized. And we need to stop stigmatizing foster care understand these are some of the most resilient young people you will ever meet, and try to change the narrative on what we think about foster youth, because they're fantastic. They're just like every other kid. They've just been hit with some inc incredibly difficult circumstances. So I would say what we can do is stop thinking about foster kids as some monolith and realize that we can be mentors for foster kids, tutors for foster kids, and you're gonna meet a kid just like yours, except they've unfortunately encountered some really difficult waters. Well, Ron, I wanna thank you so much for joining us and you know, educating our viewers about foster care and highlighting the importance of foster care awareness. So thank you so much. Thank you. If you want to know more about the work that JCCA is doing to help the foster care system, please visit their website, which is seen on the screen below. We have to take a quick break, but we'll be back with more open after this.